God bless you, loved ones. Welcome to the Word with Chester. Today we will conclude our study in the 13th chapter of the Gospel of St. Luke. I want to thank all of you that are logging on. I went back into our archive sessions just to see how things uh, had been going. And I want you to know that there are lots of people going through the archive section uh, when I actually did those studies and a couple of days to a week after I looked and uh, there was only a few viewers on that uh, uh, that particular subject uh, but in going back and I see so many of the subjects so many of the uh, chapters that we studied they have had multiple hits even since then I can't give you dates and times and all of that that type of thing uh, but I do know many have went through our archives and the numbers have in, increased uh, dramatically on some of the uh, some of the sessions that we have uh, uh, presented to you and I want you to know how much I appreciate you for looking and viewing this ministry I'm doing all I can to teach you a sound doctrine uh, uh, or uh, what thus saith the Lord just coming from the Bible uh, I do think it's important for us to study the Bible systematically we will get much more out of it for those of you that don't know what we're doing we're teaching through the Bible verse by verse and chapter by chapter uh, as a result many are being blessed I'm getting uh, some uh, good emails and also uh, just the thumbs up from time to time from different ones I want you to know that I thank you so much I receive uh, correspondence from people through many parts of the United States uh, uh, places maybe I visited at one time or another uh, but yet don't know many people there but I'm receiving uh, 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 thumbs up or emails or mail uh, cards and things of that nature that uh, others have have sent from uh, different parts of our country. I know many people in California. Uh, I do hear from California, from those people that I know, but also from some people that I don't know in California. I hear from people in Chicago. I hear from people in, in Jersey, uh, uh, other parts of Illinois. I'm trying to think of the city right now, but other parts of Illinois I've heard uh, from people. I hear from people from uh, Kentucky, and, and uh, naturally I live in Texas, so I hear from people here uh, in Texas and, and uh, other parts, Oklahoma and so many other uh, states. It would take me a while to go through all of them. Uh, I've heard from people from other countries. Uh, thank God for you. Uh, thank God for our, our friends in Canada. We hear from Canada from time to time and I want you to know that I appreciate you so very much and also from the continent of Africa. I want you to know how much I appreciate uh, you viewing this program and making it a as, as the success that it is. And I want you to follow along with me today. In our last session, we read down to verse 21, and today we'll begin our session at verse 22, just to give you a recap, uh, a preface to where uh, we are going, where uh, the subject that Jesus had just got through dealing with and, and talking to them about is the uh, parable of the uh, mustard seed, of how it's such a small seed and it grows to be one of the largest trees in a garden. Uh, also, he talked about uh, that little bit of leaven, that leaven at the, the whole lump, that little bit of leaven that a woman took and, uh, and hid three measures of meal uh, till the whole was leaven. Jesus talked about that and, and uh, in our last session, we did our very best to talk to you about how the kingdom of God is and how it grows to an ultimate. It starts with something small and how Jesus can take something small from you, a very small ministry, and make it grow and, uh, uh, and reach many people. So I encourage you, if God puts something on your heart, uh, to do what thus saith the Lord, and he will always bless it. It's not your job to determine how big it's going to be. It's your job just to do what God told you to do, and he will give the increase. Uh, and so is the kingdom of God. Something very small can grow to be something very large, uh, just like the, the words of Jesus. Uh, uh, to many was small, but uh, his audience in that day began to grow to where thousands were following him. Uh, and not only in that day, but uh, uh, throughout time, just teaching and preaching his word. Uh, many, 
many people, I'm talking about millions and millions and millions of people, uh, have come to that light and, and, and received rest uh, in that little small grain mustard seed, the words of Jesus that he shared with us uh, when he walked this earth. Uh, now it has become alive in us uh, and is yet growing. Uh, the kingdom of God uh, is yet growing. So shall we start our study today in verse 22, at verse 22, uh, the Bible reads, and he went through the cities and villages teaching and journeying forward toward Jerusalem, plain to say, and I won't give commentary on every verse today, but uh, he was on his way to Jerusalem and those small cities that he went through, he, he took time and taught people and took time and healed people and delivered people from their infirmities. In verse 23, uh, then said one unto him, Lord, are there there are few that uh, uh, that be saved. What a question. Uh, and he said unto them, uh, strive to enter in at the narrow gate, or the straight gate, the old King James Version says, uh, the narrow gate, for many I say unto you, will seek in, seek to enter in uh, and shall not be able. Uh, so uh, somebody asked Jesus, <coughs> please excuse me, they took time to ask Jesus, uh, 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 are there only going to be a few folks saved? Or are there going to be many, many folks saved? And Jesus was letting them know uh, 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 in verse 24 strive to enter in at the narrow gate for many I say unto you will seek to enter in uh, and shall not be able uh, well what are you saying many people are going to tr uh, think they're going to heaven and uh, actually not going there uh, and I'm not I'm not teaching this lesson to put you off on the judgment seat and it's easy for us to get on the judgment seat ourselves uh, when we read a chapter like this because uh, uh, I know Jesus said enter in at the narrow gate uh, but yet he also told us to let the judging be on him. Uh, so who, where is the narrow gate? And where, what are we seeking for when we're seeking for the narrow gate? Uh, well, somebody in their mind and in their intellect says, well, I'm going to go to a church that uh, don't let you do this and don't let you do that. Uh, or they preach against this and they preach against that. Well, that's all right if that's where your comfort zone is. Uh, if that's where you need to be, that's where you need to go. But I also find uh, in, in some of those churches where they are that strict, uh, uh, they are so strict they, they leave off what is what Jesus called a weightier matter uh, where they, they don't love people. They don't show people the love that they need uh, because they're so staunch in what they do. They don't reach out to the one who's gotten weak. Uh, they want to push him and completely put him out of the church because of who he is. Well, let me let you know, that puts them away from the narrow gate just like the one that does this and does that, what we call blatant sins. Uh, well, sin is sin and I would never try to justify sin, uh, uh, including if I sin. I wouldn't try to justify it. If it's wrong, it's just wrong. Uh, so no need of trying to justify sin. Uh, what we're doing is trying to seek a narrow gate. Uh, and that narrow gate is also uh, uh, you trying to help people when they are falling. Uh, you're trying to seek people out that uh, who you can encourage along the way who may not be where you are right now. Uh, that narrow gate is showing love to people uh, and, and trying to get them to reach where they need to be in God uh, and not be the one who is on the judgment seat trying to kill everybody, uh, uh, trying to say everybody's out. So there's a fine line there. Uh, uh, some people that go to those staunch churches are not going to make it in. Why? Because their mentality is so. Uh, and let me let you know, I used to be one of them. Uh, I, I was one of, the, one, of, one of those hard pastors that, uh, who taught uh, taught holiness or hell. Uh, and I do believe Jesus, the word of God says, follow peace with all men. Uh, uh, holiness without no man shall see the Lord. That's in the word of God. Uh, but where holiness is, uh, is not all the time in our in our mindset the way we think holiness is. Well, I can't do this. Uh, uh, a woman said I can't wear pants. They used to be so strict that women couldn't even wear wear pants. Uh, they were so so strict that uh, 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 you couldn't, couldn't go out and play ball. I remember when I was growing up, if you was on the football team or the basketball team, you were just out. And if you got off into uh, a, a, a band that played secular music, you were just out. You done backslid. You know, that's just the way it was. They were so hard and so rigid in their doctrine. 
that uh, many people left God, left the church, and said, well, uh, ain't nobody going to make it in. Why should I try? Uh, so what? Uh, all I am saying here is that narrow gate, uh, there's, a, there's a fine line there between the two, uh, the two sides. If you remember me teaching, uh, those of you that's been with me the full time, uh, I talked about that pet, uh, the pendulum, uh, where it swings this way and then it swings that way. Uh, uh, it swings so to the extreme this way till we say, everything is wrong and we put everybody out of the church and then the pendulum swings the other way that uh, you can do anything you want to do and yet be saved. That's not right either. Uh, there's a fine line where that narrow gate is uh, and Jesus wants us to seek that fine line. Uh, not being judgmental, not being mean to folks and not hating people and not kicking people out of the church uh, but loving people until they come to a full knowledge of our Lord and our Savior Jesus. Jesus Christ. Uh, no, not being too loose. It's saying you can go doing every, everything you want to do and yet be saved. No, I would never condone that either. Uh, but I will say there is a fine line. Uh, and Jesus said, enter in at the narrow gate. Uh, when you get too stringent to where you're almost teaching people to hate uh, and to scorn, uh, you have left that narrow gate. You left that, uh, left that <coughs> uh, the straight gate because of your harshness. Uh, and then those on the other side uh, uh, that had that gone out to say you can do everything uh, that you that you possibly can and yet be saved, well, they've also left the, uh, the, the, the narrow gate. They've left the straight gate. Uh, so there's a fine line that Jesus wants us to reach uh, to where uh, he wants all of us to go to heaven. Uh, he doesn't want any of us to go to hell, but he's making a plain situation here. Uh, if you remember all of our teaching, he talked a lot about judging, uh, us uh, being on the judgment seat. He taught a lot about uh, uh, us not loving people as we should. Uh, he was down on the Pharisees and the Sadducees uh, all of the time because of their attitude and, and not having any uh, uh, any uh, uh, compassion on people. Uh, uh, even uh, folks being healed on the Sabbath day uh, and things of that nature, where they they kept the law to the to the point to where they were unholy themselves because they were trying to keep a law uh, that uh, they alienated people and hurt people in what they did and what they uh, uh, what they were all about. Uh, verse 24, strive to enter in at the narrow gate. For many I say unto you uh, uh, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. Uh, well, let's continue reading in verse uh, 25. Uh, uh, when once the master of the house is risen uh, and has shut the door uh, and, and he shall begin to stand outside uh, and uh, to knock at the door saying, Lord, Lord, uh, open unto us. Uh, uh, he shall answer and say unto them, uh, I know you not from where ye are. Uh, I don't even know you. I don't know where you're from. Uh, uh, shall we read on in verse 26? Uh, then shall he begin to say, uh, we have eaten and have drunk in thy presence, and thou hast taught, uh, uh, and thou hast taught in our streets. Uh, but he shall say, I tell you, uh, I know you not. From where are ye? Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. Depart from me. Uh, well, uh, that's going to be a hard saying for a lot of people. Uh, what is, why is it going to be such a hard saying for a lot of people? Uh, a whole lot of people have gone to church and they, they did what they thought was the right thing, uh, but yet uh, they have been led astray. Uh, what do you mean? Anytime people, uh, anytime any group of people are te is teaching you to hate, they are not of God. <coughs> If they're teaching you to ostracize people, they're not of God. If they're calling everybody a devil and they don't even know them, well, they're not of God. Why they've entered into the judgment seat? So you got to watch. You got to watch both extremes. Not to get too loose, but then not to get so rigid that you say nobody's gonna be saved. Everybody's out, but you and your little group. You've gone too far, and God will never condone what you do. Shall we read verse? Verse 27, but he shall say, I tell you, know you from uh, from where you are, depart from me, uh, all ye workers of iniquity. Verse 28, uh, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth uh, when ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and 
Jacob and all the prophets uh, in the kingdom of God and you yourself thrust out. Oh my God, what a horrible thing. Uh, when you get that close and you can see all of the workings of, that are, that's going on in the heavenlies. Uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and all the patriarchs uh, and then you yourself thrust out. Isn't that, wouldn't that be a terrible thing? Uh, that will be a terrible, terrible thing. Uh, shall we read verse 29? And they shall come from the east and from the west uh, and from the north and from the south and shall sit down uh, in the kingdom of God. Uh, all of his people, all of his elect will come from every direction to sit down uh, in the kingdom of God. And behold, uh, there are last who shall be first and there are first who shall be last. Uh, so don't fool yourself. Uh, you may have been in the church for, for, for 50 years, 100 years, however many years you've been in there. That does not guarantee your seat if your heart has never been changed and you've never received the grace of God. you got to understand it's not by your works uh, that, uh, that any of us should boast. It's not by our works that any of us can boast. Uh, it's, a, it's by the grace of God. Uh, everything is about what Jesus did. Uh, nothing about what you've done. Uh, you got to let him in your life and let him change your life to be like him. Uh, that's what it's all about. Well, shall we read? <coughs> Please excuse me. In verse 30, and behold, there are last who shall be first, and there are first who shall be last. Verse 31, the same day there came certain of the Pharisees, saying unto him, Get thee out and depart from here, for for Herod will kill thee. Uh, well, they did warn Jesus uh, to get out, uh, get away, uh, because Herod will kill thee. You got to understand, they were out to kill Jesus, uh, number one, because of the power that he had, or the, the authority that he had uh, over over unclean spirits, over the authority that he had over uh, uh, even the people loving him like they did. They wanted to kill him, and, and uh, they the, 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 the sad thing about it, uh, these people called Jesus a devil. Uh, they they call him a devil himself, and they sought to kill him on every occasion. Uh, well, let's read verse uh, 32. Uh, and he said unto them, Go and tell that fox, uh, Behold, I cast out demons, and I do curse today and tomorrow, uh, and the third day I shall have finished. Uh, what do you say? Jesus is letting us uh, uh, say, Go tell that fox. He was talking about a Herod. Uh, go tell that uh, 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 what if he, he, he used an adjective to, to describe the spirit that he have uh, that he had. Go tell that fox. Uh, go tell that fox. Uh, behold, I cast out demons and I do curse today and tomorrow and the third day I shall have finished. Uh, well, if Jesus curses, you're cursed. Uh, uh, well, you, you got to understand, this would make uh, uh, the king mad if he heard that Jesus cursed the place. Uh, it would make him mad and they'd come out to kill him. Uh, well, Jesus said, just let him know. Go tell him. Go tell him. If I said it, I said it. Uh, and if it happened, it's going to happen. If I said it, it's going to happen. Uh, go tell that father Behold, I cast out demons and do curse today and tomorrow, and the third day I shall have finished. Verse 33, Nevertheless, I must walk today and tomorrow and the day following, for it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. So you got to understand, remember what I was telling you, and I've been teaching you all of this time, that these writers and even the words of Jesus, the actions of Jesus, have well, they were there to prove that Jesus was the one spoke of uh, in the Old Testament scriptures. Uh, the one spoke of by Isaiah. And I've quoted to you many times. Uh, read it for yourself. Uh, Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. Read Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. Uh, Isaiah uh, chapter 53. Read these chapters. Read them, uh, and, and uh, you'll see that they were talking about Jesus. Uh, they were talking about our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, and uh, uh, Jesus was letting them know. As I reread verse 33, verse 33, Nevertheless, I must walk today and tomorrow and the day following, for it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. Uh, in so many words, he had to get to Jerusalem uh, to fulfill this prophe prophecy. Uh, he had to get there uh, uh, to, for this to be the one who was actually spoke about in the Old Testament scripture. Let me read it again. It's so important that you grasp this. 
<coughs> Please excuse me. Verse 33. Nevertheless, I must walk today and tomorrow and the day following, for it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. Uh, in so many words, I got to get to Jerusalem uh, because this is where I'm going to shed my blood. I got to get to Jerusalem uh, because this is where things are going to happen. As we read verse 34, uh, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which killeth the prophets uh, and stoneth them that are sent unto thee, uh, how often would I have gathered thy children together? Uh, so Jesus is, uh, is, is, is uttering word. Can, can you feel uh, the heaviness that he's, uh, that he's under right here? Oh, Jerusalem, uh, oh, Jerusalem, uh, which killeth the prophets uh, and, and stoneth them that are sent unto thee. Uh, how often would I have gathered thy children together uh, as a hen doeth gather her brood uh, under her wings? Uh, and ye would not, you would not hear, uh, you would not hear the prophets, but yet you turn to kill them. Uh, you would not hear what God has for you, but, but you turn to kill uh, them. <coughs> Shall we read in verse 35? Uh, Behold, your house uh, is left unto you desolate. Uh, Jesus is putting it on them here now. Behold, your house is left to you desolate. Uh, and verily I say unto thee, uh, ye shall not see me uh, until this time come uh, when ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. So Jesus uh, actually prophesying, letting them know uh, even their own houses would be desolate. Uh, don't you fool yourself. Uh, a true prophet of God is not going to always tell you good things. Uh, a true prophet of God sometimes will curse you. Uh, why? Because uh, the Holy Spirit uh, has let him know and the Holy Spirit has moved on him. Uh, and Jesus told them these words. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. And verily I say unto you, you shall not see me until the time come when ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Well, this is the words of Jesus. I want to thank each of you for listening to our ministry. I want you to know if you would like to contact me for any reason. If you would like to ask a question, ask a question. If you would like to send a tax deductible gift gift to this ministry, you can write me at 3741 Candle Bluff Drive, San Antonio, Texas, 78244. You can also reach me at my website, www.poemsbychester.com. Remember, I love you, my friends, with the love of the Lord. God bless you.